The main attributes of the Arcane Archer is the Arcane Shots. They bring a lot of versatility to the martial archetype and have some really useful effects, so let's dive into all the options you get with that. Hey fellow Game Masters, I'm Richard Quiner and welcome back to the RPG Daily, your daily dose of all things tabletop role-playing games helping you to build your world and master your game. Today we are diving into the Arcane Shot options for the Arcane Archer martial archetype. There's eight of them, like I mentioned before, there's one for every school of magic, and each of them has a different effect and a different way they work. If you haven't seen the video about the Arcane Archer martial archetype, you're going to want to go check that one out first. The link will be up on the screen here somewhere, but let's dive into it. The Arcane Archer makes use of Arcane Shots. Arcane Shots are magical effects that they imbue into their arrows as they fire them. These arcane shots can be used with a longbow or a short bow that fires arrows, so no crossbows, light crossbows, hand crossbows, none of that. At level 3 you gain access to two of these options, then you gain more options at levels 7, 10, 15, and 18. In addition to that, all of these options have an improvement that you achieve at level 18, which we will cover for each option. As we go through these options, you'll notice that some require attack rolls to hit and other saving throws. Others require just saving throws. You'll see the difference as we go through all the options. The important thing to remember is as you use the arcane... The important thing to remember is when you tr go to expend an arcane shot, if it requires an attack roll, you can choose to use the arcane shot ability when the attack hits, instead of when you fire the arrow. If the arcane shot only requires a saving throw, then you expend that shot when you fire the arrow. You get two uses of the arcane shot per short or long rest. So let's dive into all the options. First up we get Banishing Shot. This comes from the School of Abjuration, and the TLDR is you hit a creature with your arrow and you banish them. But it's not quite like the Banishing Spell. The Banishing Spell will send a creature to another plane of existence for a much longer period of time. This one, it's a much shorter temporary period of time. They are sent to a harmless place in the Feywild, where they sit until their next turn. When you choose to use this option when you hit your target with your attack roll, they must make a charisma saving throw. If they fail that charisma saving throw, they are banished to the Feywild for a little bit. While in the Feywild, their speed is zero and they are incapacitated, but at the end of the next turn, they return to the same spot that they were in if it is unoccupied. If someone is there in their spot, then they return to the nearest unoccupied space on the table. At level 18, when this ability gets a boost, you gain an additional 2d6 force damage when you hit your target. Next up we have Beguiling Arrow, which is an enchantment school ability. This one lets you hit a target with an arrow and then have them be charmed by one of your allies. When you hit your target with an attack roll, they first off take 2d6 psychic damage from the shot. You then also pick a target ally within range of them. You then also pick a target ally within 30 feet of the initial target and your enemy is then charmed by your ally for the duration. This charm lasts until the start of your next turn and stays in place unless your ally hurts the target creature in some way, casts a spell, makes them make a saving throw, something like that could end the charm prematurely. At level 18, the psychic damage received from this ability increases to 4d6 psychic damage. Next we have an evocation ability, the bursting arrow. This is an explosive arrow, basically. When you hit your target with a bursting arrow attack roll, the arrow explodes, dealing damage to any creature within 10 feet of it. So then that creature and any additional creature within 10 feet of it take 2d6 force damage from the bursting arrow. There is no saving throw applied to this ability, and at level 18, that force damage is increased to 4d6. Next is Enfeebling Arrow. This is a necromancy school of magic ability, and it weakens your opponent and makes them a little less dangerous on the battlefield. When you hit a target with this Enfeebling Arrow, first off they take 2d6 necrotic damage right off the bat. Then they have to make a constitution saving throw. If they fail that constitution saving throw, then the damage output from their weapon is halved until the start of your next turn. So their big weapons won't hurt quite as much on anybody for at least a round which is kind of nice. At level 18, the necrotic damage dealt by this ability increases to 4d6 instead of the 2d6. Next, we have Grasping Arrow, which comes from the Conjuration School of Magic. This one lets you trap an opponent in brambles and thorns, causing damage 
on the initial hit as well as when they try to move through them. Right off the bat, when you hit your target with your attack and use the Grasping Arrow, they take 2d6 poison damage from the arrow. Then their speed is reduced by 10 feet, so they're moving a little slower. In addition to that, the first time on their turn that they try to move while in this Grasping Arrow grasp, you could say, they take an additional 2d6 slashing damage from the brambles and the thorns that have them held. Any creature, including the target creature, can try to remove these brambles from the target by making an athletics check against the DC of the spell, of Arcane Shot. So that's the 8 plus proficiency plus your intelligence. If they are unable to free themselves from the binds, these binds last for one minute. At level 18, the poison damage and the slashing damage from these brambles increases to 4d6. Next is Piercing Arrow. This is a transmutation school ability. This one is a little different than the others because there is no attack roll. It is all based on a dexterity saving throw and it allows you to hit multiple targets at once. When you fire the arrow and it becomes a piercing arrow, it first off turns ethereal and creates a 30 foot by 1 foot wide line in a straight line. This arrow can pass through objects such as walls and other cover and could potentially hit any creature in that line. All the creatures in that line need to make a dexterity saving throw. If they fail the dexterity saving throw, they take the initial arrow damage plus an additional 1d6 piercing damage from that arrow. If they succeed on the saving throw, they take half of the damage. At level 18, the extra damage from this piercing arrow increases to 2d6. Next, from the School of Divination, we have the Seeking Arrow, which is an arrow that can be used to find an enemy or a target that you've seen within the last minute. How this works is you choose a target that you've seen within the last minute um, in game time, and you fire your arrow. The arrow will then track that creature as best it can, going around walls and past three-quarter cover. If the creature is in just like a full room, it's not going to go through the door necessarily, but if they're in three-quarters cover, it will go around and try to find them. If the creature is within range of the max range of your bow, meaning longbows could be, I think, up to 300 feet, something along those lines, and there is a clear path to them, meaning the creature is not in a room, that creature then must make a dexterity saving throw. If they fail the dexterity saving throw, first they take the initial damage from the arrow, plus they take an additional 1d6 psychic damage from being hit by this seeking arrow. And on top of that, you now know the exact location of that target. If they've succeeded on the saving throw, they take half damage and you do not know where they are. At level 18, the extra force damage from the seeking arrow increases to 2d6. And last from the School of Illusion is the Shadow Arrow. This one gets in the way of your opponent's vision. When you hit a target with your attack roll and choose to use the Shadow Arrow, they first off take 2d6 psychic damage, then they must make a wisdom saving throw. If they fail that saving throw, then they are blinded to anything outside of 5 feet away from them. So they just become really, really short-sighted for a temporary time period. This short-sightedness lasts until the start of your next turn, and at level 18, the psychic damage increases to 4d6. That is all the arcane shot options available to the arcane archer. Let me know your favorites in the comments below. I'm kind of torn. I like the bursting arrow because I like the idea of exploding and hitting everyone, but I also really like the grasping arrow because I do like the idea of dealing poison damage on top of slashing damage, and it just seems to have a higher damage output if you're successful with the grasping arrow. I'm kind of torn between those. I like them both. I like the enfeebling arrow. I like the seeking. I like them all. They're all pretty cool. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this channel, I invite you to go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button on the video because that really helps us get out there to more people as the YouTube algorithm says, hey, this is good stuff. So please do that. Follow me over on Instagram for more content similar to this in smaller bite-sized chunks. If you want to talk D&D stuff with a bunch of other nerds, come join us on Discord and we'll have chats and talk about stuff. And if you need some minis for your tabletop gaming, or you just want to stock up for when you get to go back in person, check out my Etsy shop, Adventures in 3D. The link is in the description. It's kind of the sponsor of the channel now because it's mine. You buy minis, I ship them to you that I 3D print and license. So there's some pretty cool stuff on there. So go ahead and check that out as well. All that being said, I've been Richard. Thanks for watching.